Hi everyone, welcome back to Slower Talks, that is me and today it is Wednesday which means it is time for Killer Wednesday. Again, apologies for the bird, he has been very, very talkative today. <clears throat> um, so I just want to preface this by saying that um, any of the psychological explanations that I discuss in this video it is in no way justification for what this person did and it is definitely not an excuse. It just simply explains um, the psychology of that person and a possibility for why they committed the crimes they did. So with that out of the way, today we are going to focus on Lacey Spears, I believe her name is. So if you don't know who that is, um, I think it was in 2015, um, she killed her son Garnet. Um, she was known as a mummy blogger who blogged all about her son's illnesses and um, unfortunately when he was five years old he was killed. So <clears throat> let's get into the background of Lacey. So she was born October 16th 1987 and she grew up in Decatur, Alabama with her mum, dad and her siblings. I believe there was an older brother and a younger brother or sister, I'm not sure which. Um, her mum and dad were known to have very, very poor health and this is possibly where everything started. Her mum was a type 1 diabetic and her dad had Crohn's and celiac disease. Um, Lacey did see that her parents were very ill and she saw the sympathy and attention that they got for these illnesses. It was said that she had quite a difficult relationship with both of her parents but mostly her mum who was described as very cold and not a very loving person. Um, unfortunately she did not get the attention she craved and again this possibly led to the events later on that happened. So at this time she turned her attention to dolls and caring for her dolls but it really became quite the obsession. Um, she turned to hold her dolls for comfort and the relationship that she had with her dolls it was described as inseparable. She would take them everywhere and, and um, care for them. She would pretend that the dolls were her children and it was said that this was like quite an unhealthy attachment. However, because she wasn't getting that attention and love at home, this is how it was kind of expressed. There was one instance where a friend was over and she had attempted to play with one of the dolls and Lacey actually began strangling that friend. Um, she did eventually calm down and let her friend go, um, thank God. Um, and when the parents of that friend came to pick the little girl up, they noticed she had bruises all around her neck and that friend was never allowed to go to Lacey's house again. From a young age, so around about five, Lacey was desperate to be a mum and she began at this time throwing herself into various activities. Um, when she was a little bit older, she also stopped having that unhealthy obsession with dolls <clears throat> and she joined various clubs including drama and I mention this because when she begins to blog about her son's illnesses, she is very good at acting. Um, she was said to excel in school and was described as a teacher's pet. However, her classmates found Lacey really strange. And this wasn't because she was like a teacher's pet or really smart or anything like that. This was because Lacey was like a chronic liar. She would lie about the smallest things and it was just really weird. And she did this to get attention because again, she wasn't getting the attention at home and that is what she craved. There was one instance where she arrived at school with an ankle brace and children had been like, oh, what happened? And she said that she had a cheerleading accident. However, this didn't get her enough attention or what she would describe as enough attention. So she changed her story and reportedly said that she had anorexia and that she had collapsed because her legs were that weak. And as she collapsed, she um, broke her ankle. 
she would tell everyone that she hadn't eaten in days however she was caught out by a friend who had said like you ate something at lunch yesterday and Lacey was kind of backtracked and said oh yeah but apart from that I haven't eaten for three days at 14 she told her classmates she was pregnant we're not sure if this is true or untrue it's never been um proven so to speak but we're not sure if this is a lie or not but anyway she did tell her classmates she was pregnant and after a few days she then said to her classmates that she had an abortion in um a clinic however her friend's mum worked at this clinic and she had basically said they don't do abortions there and then again Lacey backtracked because she was caught lying and she said no 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 I meant it was this clinic in another like state um so immediately obviously the kids caught on to Lacey just constantly lying and this behavior actually carried on into adulthood um she when she was um a teenager again I'm not sure how old she began accusing family members of uh, sexually abusing her and again we don't know if this is true it's never been confirmed um but this is what had happened and she ran away to her friend's house and told the adults within that household what had happened and they allowed Lacey to stay for her safety they wanted her to be safe and um, the friend's mum like any parent would then reported this to the police and the child services then got involved however they didn't find anything that would point to Lacey being sexually abused um at this point she also decided to call various women in her life such as teachers friends mom's mom um again due to this lack of attention she was getting at home and it it's kind of sad because it kind of does lead into the psychological issues that Lacey had um and she was obviously just craving that love and attention she um yeah so when she was around 18 so she graduated high school and she began uh, babysitting and looking after children um she worked at a local church nursery who were looking for help and it was said that she formed like really close attachments to the children but this was kind of odd um, and she would often say that the children were her own children um, at this point she also moved out of the family home and uh, gained another job in childcare uh, out with the church and would babysit in the evenings she would even also offer her services for free just because she loved children that much and at this point she met a young mum who was uh, 17 and offered her help with her child for free. Uh, she began looking after this baby and Lacey at this point would kind of decide when she was returning the baby and when she was looking after the baby which was again quite odd. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh God. <coughs> Excuse me oh sorry about that um so she would have control of when she took the baby and when she would drop the baby off much to the mum's um disappointment really and she would decide how long she would have this little boy and again the mum was only 17 she was just young and she really did need the help um the mother of the the little boy had to call Lacey numerous times for her to return her son and um Lacey at this point uh, whenever she was out with the little boy she I'm sure she actually posted photos and told people that this was her baby I think the photos are still on social media but I'm not entirely sure um and the the young mum actually had taken the little boy to a park that Lacey had taken him and someone had mentioned like oh you have Lacey's little boy today and she was like no this this is my son um but again this didn't really alert her to anything because again she really did need the help um and the another strange thing was that whenever Lacey was babysitting this child or any other child the baby would always get um like ear infections 
Um, but when they were at home, out with Lacey's care, these just disappeared and they had no problems. And it was always with the ear and I, it, I mean, I just found that really weird. Um, so yeah, um, and it all came to a stop when basically in 2007, Lacey actually disappeared with this little boy over a weekend. Um, and obviously the mum was frantic and Lacey turned up on the Monday with the baby and she was then subsequently fired because obviously the, the mother couldn't get a hold of her and it was just like the final straw. So moving on to Lacey's actual son, Garnet. Um, so Lacey had at this point, I think she was maybe 19 um, and she had a goal of getting pregnant. She wanted her own baby. She met a man called Blake and they had gone on a couple of dates. However, that was the extent of it. They didn't sleep together. There was no intercourse. You know, they just went on a couple of dates and that was it. She then also started seeing um, a, a neighbour called Chris. But however, when they were like dating, he noticed that she was only interested in sex and not actually interested in getting to know him at all. And it was at this time that she fell pregnant um, but she told Chris and Chris was really excited but she then said to Chris it's not yours that's it and then she just cut Chris off she at this point also continued to babysit other children and on the 3rd of December 2008 when Lacey was 21 years old she gave birth to Garnet and um, the pregnancy and the labour were said to be like smooth sailing as smooth sailing as labour can be and um, so they weren't expecting any issues with the baby how, um, and he was said to be quite healthy when he was born. However, a few weeks later, Lacey um, was posting pictures of Garnet all over social media and she was getting quite a bit of attention, but again, not the attention she wanted. Um, so at this time, uh, Lacey uh, took Garnet to the hospital and told the doctors that he had a fever and that something was wrong with his ears. Um, again, this happened to some of the children that she actually babysat for. They tested Garnet, but they really couldn't find anything wrong and they sent Garnet and Lacey home. Lacey continued to post photos of Garnet all over social media and she was reportedly just loving this attention. Um, on Boxing Day, Garnet was again rushed to hospital. Um, testing took place and Garnet, Garnet was again then sorry put on an IV at this point Lacey would take pictures of Garnet in hospital and uh, post them to get sympathy in 2009 uh, Lacey and Garnet were at the doctors quite often by this point I mean Garnet was only four or five months old um, and she then told the doctors that Garnet wasn't eating and that he was continually being sick and there was always something wrong with his ears. Um, she continued to post about how sick Garnet was and this gained more attention and more sympathy. Doctors, however, could never find anything that was wrong with Garnet. Um, and actually one doctor at this point suspected that Lacey did have something called Munchausen's by proxy. So if you don't know what that is, Munchausen's by proxy is basically when a parent or caregiver will intentionally make their child ill or lie about their child's sickness um, and take them to the hospital to gain attention. Um, it is a psychological disorder and unfortunately not a lot, lot is known about it. We don't know what causes it, um, but it is a psychological illness that Lacey had. Um, and if she had been able to admit this and get help for this and um, the events might not have happened however we'll never know um when the doctor approached Lacey about this she got very defensive and decided to move doctors which is very common and continued to move doctors anytime a doctor brought this up and I believe it was brought up multiple times Lacey continued to tell doctors about Garnett's eating issues and the vomiting and she was able to actually find a doctor who operated on Garnet and this operation would stop Garnet from uh, vomiting. And again, Garnet was only about five or six months old. 
Um, at this time, another doctor also inserted a feeding tube into Garnett. Um, and again, Lacey would continue taking these pictures of Garnett in hospital to gain attention. Friends of Lacey have reported that Garnett was actually a good eater and um, that if Lacey caught him eating, she would smack him. Um, in 2010, Lacey then moved to uh, Florida and she moved in with her grandmother. And at this time, it was she kind of decided to start a vlog um, about Garnett's illnesses and his journey. She posted on this blog that Garnett's dad had passed away. Um, she actually stated that Garnett's dad was Blake, but remember, she didn't even sleep with Blake. She had only gone on a couple of dates with him. And Blake was actually still alive. He wasn't dead. Um, and she would constantly post saying, like, oh, missing daddy Blake and um, Garnett misses you so much because, again, that would gain her quite a lot of sympathy. Um, however, people that were um, close to Lacey became suspicious of Lacey, and Gar um, of Lacey and Garnett's illnesses because they never actually saw him being ill. At the end of 2012, when Garnett was four, the small family again relocated to New York. At this time, she joined um, a fellowship community and they basically believed in living off of the land and believed in like natural medicines. Um, many in the community actually saw Garnett as like a very healthy child and they also did see Garnett eating but Lacey continued with her story that Garnett was like a really bad eater. Um, in January 2014, Lacey called her friend in a panic stating that Garnett had had a seizure and that she needed a ride to the hospital because I don't think she drove and she didn't have any way to get there. Um, when the friend arrived, however, Lacey was said to be like eerily calm and she wasn't rushing about to get Garnett to the hospital. She was just kind of dawdling, like going slowly as ever. It was really weird. Um, the friend also saw, um, so like Garnett's feeding tube went into like an, uh, an IV bag type thing and she noticed that the bag was filled with a milky white liquid. At the hospital, it was reported that Lacey didn't really seem all that concerned about her son and only really cared about taking pictures of him and then posting them onto her blog. Um, doctors could also see at this point that Garnett was trying to vomit. However, because of the operation that he had had uh, when he was around five or six months old, he couldn't vomit. Um, and that must have been really horrible for the poor little boy. Um, and, but other than that and some shaking, they couldn't see anything that was wrong with Garnett. Um, they also, at this point, checked his sodium levels. They were at 140, which was pretty normal. Um, however, Lacey kept insisting that Garnett was ill and doctors at this point put him on an EEG machine just to make sure that everything was okay. Um, it was at this point when no one else was in the room, but there is CCTV in the hospital and Lacey is seen taking her son to the bathroom and then when they come out, Garnett just immediately turns very, very sick. Doctors then came to the room and found that his sodium levels were at 182 and this was very dangerous. Like no doctor had seen the sodium levels go above like 160 so this this was impossible like this couldn't have happened um garnett was then airlifted to a specialist hospital and hooked up to an IV to try and bring his levels down um at this point lacy and her friend were in the waiting room but lacy just continued to post on social media and on her blog about how ill her son was unfortunately 24 hours after garnett's admittance to the hospital he did pass away and when doctors came to tell Lacey, they reported that she acted like really oddly and asked if she could just go into his room and see his body. Um, at this time, she did take more pictures and posted on her blog that her son had passed away. Doctors did conclude that Lacey had actually poisoned her son with salt and informed the police. Um... The police obviously then got a warrant to search Lacey's house 
and found the bag that was attached to the freezing tube of the milky white liquid and saw that this was um salt and it and they also found two open containers of salt um, the police did test the liquid and found out it was a sodium mix and also found that Lacey had googled information about sodium and sodium poisoning. Lacey was then arrested and was found guilty of second degree murder um, and first degree manslaughter. She was sentenced to 20 years in prison and she continues to deny that she killed her son or did anything wrong but actually blames the hospital for negligence. And that is the unfortunate story of um, Lacey's son, Garnett Spears. Um, so like I said, we do know that Lacey had a psychological disorder known as Munchausen's by proxy. And doctors did suspect this, excuse me. However, by the time they brought this up to Lacey, she disappeared to another city or another state to continue admitting her son um, into hospital because I don't think she was ever actually formally diagnosed as having Munchausen's so it was never flagged but I think maybe if she was properly diagnosed and she got the right help this may not have happened and again I'm not just implying her actions I am not giving her an excuse it is just an explanation for why she unfortunately um, killed her son Garnet. Um, if you have any cases for me that you would like me to look into definitely leave it in the comment box below um, and if this is the sort of content that you enjoy hearing about I am here every Wednesday um, and definitely go and hit that subscribe button.